Hey guys, what is I'm here to look at another review this time from you guys saw on Sunday. <laughs> That's right. I am bringing my review quicker than I usually have the last few weeks. And thank God that I got to, get to talk about this film early because... <laughs> oh man, why, why, I'm so happy talking about this film. I'm so excited to talk about it to you guys. The Martian. Sci-fi film directed by Ridley Scott, written by Drew Goddard, based on Andy Weir's novel, the same name, starring Matt Damon, Jessica Chastain, Kristen Wiig, Jeff Daniels, Michael Pena, Kate Mara, Sean Bean, Sebastian Stan, Askel Henny, Chiwa Tata, G Geo 4, Donald Glover, um, Mackenzie Davis. Huh. Wait, was she? I don't know. I think I'm thinking about Mackenzie Boy, yeah, the Interstellar. We'll get we'll talk about that later. <laughs> And you all know about this, guys. You all know what it's about. So this is about this is crew called the Aries. They're on this mission now. This is crew called based on who are on this mission called the Aries Three on Mars. And unfortunately, a storm hits. An unpredictable storm. A storm hits Mars, and they have to abandon the mission. But unfortunately, one of their one of their crew is hit by debris, and suppose and and is supposedly and presumed dead on Mars. They unfortunately without him, but however, this astronaut, Mark Watney, is still alive, and he must try to survive on Mars before, so before and hope, and try to survive as long as he can until another, till a team can come and rescue him from NASA. Guys, I was so excited for this movie because I love Ridley Scott, I love Alien from uh, Blade Runner, Gladiator, and I really like American, I, I think American Gangster is great, but you know, those are the three, those are my two favorite films from Ridley Scott, okay? And even though he has been a bit of a mediocre, he's been mediocre lately, which from what I heard, I was still looking forward to this movie because, you know what, the crew involved, the trailer's pretty cool, even though some of them are a bit spoilery, I was still looking forward to it, and the reviews, once they started hitting out, I was sold. I was looking forward, I was so excited for this movie. I was so excited. Looking forward to it. Every day of the release, I was going to my hand there. <laughs> wow, I watch the trailer sometimes, and just so excited. And when I saw it on Sunday, so worth it. Oh my god, guys. I love this movie. I waited two months for a standout film, and I finally got one. Guys, this is a return form for Ridley Scott. This is one of his best in years. Same for Matt Damon. Guys, this is this is a great sci-fi movie. One of my favorites of decades so far that you're not going to beat films like Gravity or Inception. Gravity is kind of better for me in terms of the how it's influential in me as a film critic, okay? Anyways, though, guys. Let's get to it. What I love about this movie most is the cast. Matt Damon, outstanding as Mark Watney. He is so awesome as a character. I mean, he just sells the role. He absolutely is one of my favorite parts of the movie. He's, he has to sell this entire movie for, for an hour 22 minutes, for two hours 21 minutes. And it does, he does it. I'm sure it's not mostly based on him, but he can sell it. And his characterization of Watney, Perfect. Loved him. He's hilarious. He's likable. And he just has these awesome wisecracks. His comedic timing is absolutely great. He captures the mannerisms of it, but also he captures the intelligence, the sarcastic wit and humor of Watney. Damon, I seriously hope you get an I Even though I'm pushing a bit, I do want to see you being nominated for an Oscar because you are that good. You embody the character. He manages to stay optimistic and hopeful in his situation. He tries his best. He doesn't give up immediately. Even though there are times where he does break down. There are times where you see him and he's trying not to break down. And he's trying to hold it back. But there are times where he just has to release it. I feel for this guy. I'm invested in his in his situation. I'm, I'm scared for him. I'm, I'm enjoying him whenever he cracks jokes. Whenever he's talking to like, the cameras. Post talking to his cameras. He's basically talking to the audience. Posted all around uh, the Ares 3 station. And, uh, wow, I mean... Holy shit. This is so different from most of from today's sci-fi movies. This is something so fresh and new. Why? More one of the reasons is its tone. One of the things I like about this movie is it's actually very, very humorous. I mean seriously, there are times where I just lost it laughing. This is absolutely one of the funniest films I've seen all year. I am not kidding. It is so, so funny. So many great wisecrack jokes. There's even one scene where like his head smoking a bit. It almost reminds me of a cartoon. Yet it did not feel out of place because it was just so well put in. 
it didn't feel like a cartoon or anything like that. It was just so, so funny. I also, I mean, the humor is just great. I love everything about the film from the, just the humor is excellent. But not only him delivering humor, a lot of cast sometimes delivers a lot of humor. There's even some cool team camaraderie at times, like early in the movie, and even sometimes whenever you see the Hermes crew, which is the crew Damon is so nice to say with, which consists of Jessica Chastain, Kate Mara, Michael Pena, um, Sebastian Stan, and Scale Henny. They're just great together, and some of the few scenes they have, some of the few scenes they have together where they're communicating each other, just great. I love it, you know. I mean, everyone in the cast is great. I also love everyone. Like Chiwetel Ejiofor Geo Four is also great in the movie as a guy, as a <sighs> shit. And I was also yesterday, and sometimes I just can't remember anything. It's really sad, you know. But um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting angry. He plays uh, Vincent Kapoor, an NSA and NASA mission director. He is just great in the movie, too. He's trying to help Watney. And, yeah, it's just pretty, uh... Showing situation dire, and there are times where... You can see, you can see like, the desperation for it. See, one thing I really like about this movie is also the setting. See, what the thing is with, with Matt Damon's setting, there's only so much you can do with his situation of him being stranded on Mars. You can only do so much with it. Luckily, they do... They cut to Earth. And you see the conflict there. But the thing is... This is handled so well. One thing I love about the script is that every character in the movie seems to have a purpose for being there. A lot of the main characters. Jeff Daniels is like, you know, the national director is trying to help deliver supplies and trying to get this stuff together, you know. He's really just trying, like, he's trying to do it, but there's so much conflict on him, such as dealing with the politics of it, trying to get paperwork, trying to get the missions through, and also trying to do the media sometimes. Not a big, not a massive deal, but kind of at times. Not a big deal. Like, he's the head of NASA, okay. And also, another NASA mission director played by Sean Bean. This guy's a very more humanistic person. Like, he's really care trying to be caring for the people. You know, he does what he thinks is the best in both, like, decisions, like, um, like, I mean, he's just such a great character. Sean B, I mean, this guy's a great actor. I mean, have you ever seen Lord of the Rings? And yes, I have. Uh, no, I have not seen Game of Thrones, but I've heard so many great things about that show. And, of course, with such, an with such being having a stellar cast, including him. He's great in this movie. I like Sean B. He's pretty awesome. I mean, there's some good lines. He's a very lovable character. There's no real bad character or this forced villain in there. There's a lot of characters I'm invested in, and whether or not they're likable or not really doesn't matter. They have such wealth. They're very well-developed. And they all have a purpose for being there. Even Kristen Wiig. She shows up a lot of great serious stuff. I mean, if you haven't seen The Skeleton Twins prior to this, I think it's off Netflix now, which is sad because it's a great movie. She really has great serious work here. She's a very great dramatic actor. I mean, everyone in this movie has great dramatic work, but also good comedic work. I mean, seriously, it's great. Even Donald Glover, who doesn't have the biggest role in the movie, but he is also he's vital to the story. He does great for what he can do. For what he's given. There's some very strong material here, and to be honest, I'm really just happy that this film utilizes this massive ensemble cast to their full potential. I love it, I love it. Everyone in the cast is great, there's no bad characters, but also one thing I love about this movie, it, it makes, it get, it paints a positive image of humanity. See, the thing is about this movie, see, a lot of movies today seem to po po paint humanity as a problem. Decisions we make, polluting the environment, destroying wildlife, we're a danger, and then we're not really protecting the earth. This is us trying to save one person. This is like a collaboration with many group, like tons of people working together to save one human. That's unbelievable. And they strength from a faraway planet, so that's a pretty tough, tough uh, deal. But wow, I mean, this really just makes humanity look great. And I love what it's paint, how it paints humanity. It does it perfectly. I can't say, I can't stress it enough. The movie is also just beautiful looking. I mean, when you have really Scott, an accomplished visual director, how could you not expect some incredible visuals? This has some of the best visual effects work I've seen all year. The best, that is so far. I can't really debate on that because, uh, shit, it's hard to debate between this. And knowing fact, when I looked in some of the CGI I used from Axe Road, I actually was very surprised with some of them. I mean, a lot for backgrounds, but you know what? Maybe. I'm, this may be the best visual effects work I've seen all year, but it's so hard to debate this time. It is, I mean, also cinematography is great. The score has some great moments at times. It's very suspenseful also. This movie is more than just, you know, actually pretty damn, surprisingly very funny. It also is very tense and emotional. There's one scene where Matt Damon tries to pull shrapnel out of himself and even do surgery on himself. Surgery in a way, like first aid. 
Oh my god, I was just like freaking flinching and seriously my I was holding my hands I was holding my hands in front of my mouth like this. And seriously every time I was just just almost like cringing. It was so well done. Excellent work. And it didn't use any music. All you need to do was have strong camera work, tight editing, and of course Matt Damon perform trying to sell in the pain. Thank you really Scott for that. Seriously, this is a return form for him. I I I mean he does such an excellent job. Oh my god. This really brings out the best in Matt Damon and Ridley Scott. Because, I mean, they work so well together. Not to mention the fact the story is great and it's very smart. The science stuff is so intellectually stimulating. I think I used the term right, comp below, if I have, if I used it wrong. But see, the science is so intriguing to see. It's all intriguing to hear how they explain it. It's never really, you know, dumbed down or really just, you know, thrown out the window. They actually explain it to us. Very complex process, yet I can understand it. It is so cool. I mean, this movie is almost like almost like educational in its own way. And I have to say, wow, I did not read the book in case you want to know. And wow, I mean, it's just great. The story is very emotional. It's funny and very thrilling. The finale. Oh my God, that was incredible. <laughs> now, in case you guys want to compare this, like, to uh, oh, hold on a minute. I really didn't want that to be. I wanted to be cut short, like sometimes we have to cut to this, but I want to continue on. You make comparison to Interstellar, but you know what? The book came out in 2011. Interstellar came out in 2014. Whatever you care about. Now people say it combines like the survival of like cat, the isolation of Castaway with the problem solving Apollo 13. I guess I can agree. It's very well done, but you know what? It still feels fresh and original, and I can't. I mean, there's so much praise to give it. The finale is so riveting. I loved it. And actually, I was like, I actually was tearing up. I almost cried watching it, and I was so happy the way the film concluded. I I, I loved it, guys. I seriously loved it. One of my favorite theater experiences. I saw on D I saw on you know Santiago's AVX, you know, with like 4K quality, high quality picture in Dolby Atmos. It was perfect. It was so well. It was perfect for me. There's, I mean. I can't say anything else more than this is an excellent, excellent film. A true standout. Two months. Two months I waited for a standout film 2015, but it was so worth the wait because I finally got one. One of my films I'll probably be talking about until the end of the year, or even longer than that. This replaces Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> oh my god, guys. I loved it. It was so, so good. I loved it. The visuals were excellent. The visuals were outstanding. The cast is excellent. It's so funny. It has. It's so tense. Very smart and thrilling. It's very emotional. I'm invested in the characters. I love all the characters. The cast. I mean, the cost. The production values are great. The art direction. The sound. The use of sounds great. The score is pretty good. The editing is pretty good. I love the cinematography. The directing is great. I mean, really, Scott really pulled off here. Actually, Drew Goddard was going to direct this. Now, would it change my opinion on the film? I don't know. If, I don't know because I mean, would he direct it the same way or something similar to that? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. I don't think it would have really mattered to me as long as it was a five out of five film for me. Guys, I really recommend you see The Martian. I mean, they already had a pretty good opening weekend, and I want you guys to check it out because it is so worth your time. It is. A, it is a standout film. One of the best sci-fi films I've seen all year. Truly, truly worth your time. <laughs> oh my god. Guys, I, I just can't praise film enough. I love The Martian. The Martian, of course, gets a 5 out of 5. Guys, I absolutely love this film. Really, Scott makes an incredible return to form. It was a major triumph for him and Matt Damon. It's it's one. It's a standout film, and I'm so happy I saw it. I can't be any happier that I saw this in theaters. This is one of the best theater experiences I had in theater in the cinema. Mm -hmm. Anyways, guys, comment below. What did you think of The Martian? How do you compare this to the book? Um, do do you hope for more collaboration between Really Scott and Matt Damon? I hope so. Comment below. Subscribe to channel for more videos.